What if there is a secret platform that you can learn in six months or less that's gonna allow you to create SaaS platforms as everybody's talking about SaaS platforms these days to create e-commerce websites, membership websites, create marketing websites for enterprises and even more than that. And actually the tool already exists and it's called Webflow. But I'm not here to tell you that like in six months or less, you're gonna make 10K per month or anything similar. You need to find Webflow fulfilling as a role in order to land a full-time job as a Webflow developer to start your freelancing career or to use Webflow for your marketing website for your own in-house SaaS software or anything similar. I'm Orosh and I'm the founder and CEO at Flow Ninja. And in 2015, I actually wanted to start my freelancing career. And I would say one of the biggest and the best decisions that I ever made was going all in on Webflow. At that point, I was like 14, 15 years old, something like that, even like right now I'm kind of pretty young. And I was comparing myself to all of my friends and some of them were learning development since they were six. So I couldn't actually compare and catch up with them like on Andreas or anything similar. And that's where I discovered Webflow and discovered kind of the power of visual development and the way Webflow actually approaches kind of website development, web building and anything similar, because unlike all of the other tools, which are trying to find a hack around actually building websites, Webflow is going to allow you to learn front end, later on to learn kind of JS and then to learn back end and to have a, an understanding of how the web works actually in the end versus like some of the other platforms that I'm seeing coming up which are trying to find, find a hacky way of you actually bundling up a website. And I think you shouldn't be worried about that. Like if you're only on Webflow, you're going to be mostly focused on becoming a really great Webflow developer and going into that direction where you're going to be able to build complex things, which are only able to be built if kind of the, the tool itself is built on the basis of how web works. The first thing is like decide if you're going to be a Webflow developer or a designer. When you search online, like you're going to see a term Webflow designer and a Webflow developer uh, many different times. And for me, like I think you need to decide which one are you because I feel like if you're a designer you're more gonna be learning kind of interactions and just making the website look nice and like the interactions to be a, like a lot nicer versus where I think like all of the money is is actually becoming a web developer understanding how web works understanding accessibility performance SEO technical SEO and then like after that understand the JS APIs how to integrate with different APIs with Webflow and create incredible things in like a lot less time than it would take a normal developer to create it online. So that's why in this video, we'll be covering mostly the process you should be taking, like if you're deciding to become a Webflow developer. But again, like both are possible. It's just about that specifically for me and like also for our agency, Flow Ninja, we have different departments. Like we have a design department. They're actually using Figma to design everything and working with clients. And they have a different set of skill sets in communication, in discovery workshops, in kind of understanding marketing and understanding many different topics in order to design a pretty good website that's going to drive business results versus developers like in our Webflow development team, which is more technically oriented to create everything in the best way possible. That's going to be like uh, loading quickly. That's going to uh, kind of be working on all possible devices, doing QA, et cetera, et cetera. The first step is going to be actually visiting the Webflow university. You can see here on the screen. And I just uh, would recommend starting with the Webflow 101. Just because it's going to give you like the overall way of kind of how actually Webflow works, which are the functions, where you can click, where you can find things. And then afterwards, I suggest basically watching everything on the Webflow University. Like even us, we do offer courses like on our website for that ninja. But I think when you're starting out, you shouldn't be wasting your time and energy and actually kind of purchasing a course, in my opinion, just because I learned everything without a course. But that's more in a stage when you actually know Webflow, like you're maybe at the junior stage of Webflow, like so, like you, you have some experience and you want to make sure that you learn things quicker. But like for those basics or anything like you getting started, Webflow University will get you covered and just try kind of just removing all of the noise outside of you and just focusing on the Webflow University until you master that. And only after you've, you've kind of mastered start of Apple University, try searching for like paid courses and kind of learning something paid or maybe even getting out one of our courses, I guess. The next thing is going to be like when you start uh, going through the Webflow 101 and like doing some of the Webflow tutorials and kind of practicing like on a live build, you're going to realize that there are th things like grid, flexbox, etc, etc. And in order to build anything on Webflow, I feel like, okay, you might be using grid for many things, but the flexbox is going to be the core tool set you're going to need to understand how it works. And that's why I recommend playing the Webflow game. And like the moment when you go ahead and go through all of the levels of the Webflow Flexbox game, you're gonna you're gonna understand how Webflow Flexbox works and how you can actually kind of uh, use it to your advantage when you're building anything on Webflow. I mean, like we personally leverage both Grid and Flexbox at Flow Ninja, 
but uh, this is wow, a really fun game we're gi giving all of our uh, all of our practitioners who are yeah. coming to our ref uh, to our Revlo Academy to kind of to work for our agency to go ahead and master and make sure that they kind of know everything inside of here. Then the next thing is gonna be which I've made a huge mistake is I didn't actually look at a class naming system, which I strongly recommend that you go ahead and understand before you actually jump into doing test projects and everything like that. We're gonna be discussing further. Understand how the web works, how class naming systems works, and like you can go ahead and take. Uh, take a look at ours like we have like a pretty basic class naming system kind of written out kind of on our website where you, you can see that you have great examples like client first you have great ex examples like knockout.com like all of them are great and it's, it all comes down like in the end to personal preference so i just recommend you that you go ahead and understand how do these class naming systems work how are they being used and how you can use them to your advantage when you actually start building in Webflow. And then the next thing is just start building. Like I've seen like many, many of my friends actually learn Webflow in the end, but they've made a huge mistake in the beginning by just watching the Webflow University and then buying courses and buying more courses and buying more courses. And like, I wish they just gave all of the money to me, I guess, in the end, instead of just wasting all the money. Because in the end, the best way you're going to learn anything you're in, like in life is just by actually doing it and trying to make it work. So I strongly suggest taking Webflow Websites like let's say apple.com or just take five of your websites that you like maybe you like watches maybe you like cars you're gonna make a Porsche's website or something like that take five websites and build them from the beginning like to the end don't actually just develop a page that looks like the website but try making everything pixel perfect go through the QA process use those class naming systems like when you're building websites and actually spend like a lot of time on developing everything from the beginning to the end and in the process of doing so you're gonna discover great YouTube channels that are gonna help you out do the things you want to. You're gonna discover great uh, bugs and kind of how to fix them on the Webflow forums. And that's gonna be the best way for you to actually learn Webflow and like nothing else is gonna change that. So like, let's say the first month you're gonna spend on actually watching the Webflow University, testing something, some things here and there. You're gonna go through the Flexbox game, et cetera, et cetera. You're gonna also probably gotta go ahead and understand the class naming systems a little bit just to have it on the back of your head. And then it's up to building and building, let's say that you set a KPI for you, like you're, you're running a business or anything similar. I'm going to build five websites in the next five months or whatever the timeline is. Maybe you're going to be ambitious and say, I'm going to be build the next five websites in three months. If you have a lot of time on your hands and just go from the beginning to the end, make everything responsive, make everything work on all possible devices, use class naming systems. And in that process, like you're going to learn actually how to do everything and how to get all of the obstacles by searching on YouTube, uh, watching forums and anything. And that's the best way. To, to learn the basics of any of the platforms. And then like, if you're like applying for a Apple developer position, probably there is no need to kind of have a fully custom designed website. Like it's more of, okay, who am I? How am I going to be positioned on the market? And why is somebody going to choose me as a freelancer or for the full-time position uh, instead of somebody else? And that's why I recommend actually recording a video and buying a template. Just because in the beginning, like for a portfolio, it's always going to be, you're going to spend too much time on designing it, making sure that it looks like the best. But just, just go ahead, find a template on the Webflow Marketplace that's going to look most like you, adjust it and like add your five websites that you built. And the important thing is like add your live link and add your preview link so that you can actually see how is the website built and that whoever is looking at your website can see the back end of the website and see how it has been built. A great example of making also the, the portfolio personal is like Pay Digital. He does a great job of actually having an intro video when you come to the portfolio just because there are going to be many different uh, kind of people applying, like if you choose Webflow or any of the other positions. And it's super important that you make your portfolio personal and that when you're sending when you're sending requests to get jobs, that you're sending also additionally personalized videos of actually you discussing with a client of why they should choose you and not somebody else. And possibly you can even create a proof of concept. Like if somebody's sending a design that, you, that they need to be developed on Webflow, you can go ahead and develop it first, like develop first three sections, because I guess you're just starting out, like you don't have nothing else to do. Develop that, go ahead and send it together to the client so that they know, okay, this guy recorded a video and created a proof of concept before even reaching out to us. And he actually wants to work with us, like, because uh, he's going to have time, he's going to have dedication and stuff like that in order to do so. That's what we, we do even today. Like even at our team, like we have a department, like when we really want to win a client, we, we do a proof of concept for them 
fully for free and send them over send that over for them to make sure that we get the message across that we are really caring about the whole process and like how everything works and then i guess like you have a portfolio you have a video like you you went through everything and you're feeling like a lot more confident about your web skills then it's gonna be up to finding jobs you can go on flow remote if you want to find a full-time web gig you can see even our logo by that we're using that to, to hire some of our developers so that can be one of the ways you can find jobs or like one of our clients actually upwork.com like they have um, like a great marketplace and like you might hear a lot of bad things online for Upwork, but we found like in the beginning, incredible clients by leveraging Upwork.com. So I strongly suggest you that you create an account, spend a lot of time customizing the account on Upwork.com, that you make sure that everything is filled in, that you create it custom and that you take it on seriously, not like that you're going to drink a coffee and create your Upwork account, but that you actually spend a good week on actually creating it and start applying for jobs. And then hopefully you're going to land either a full-time job for an agency to work with in the beginning, or you're going to start getting some of your first clients. Or if you learn this whole process just to start your own business, Webflow is a great tool set. And I, that's why I think it's great for anybody to know it because when you start learning Webflow, it's going to be a great tool set if you're doing marketing to create marketing pages to do things. If you want to create a SaaS tool, you're going to be able to do it with Webflow. And it's going to open up a whole new world of possibilities for you, like us, uh, like when you have that skill that you don't necessarily have to directly be a Webflow developer in order to do it, but you're going to be able to solve many of the other business problems by knowing the tool. And after you've gone, like you've earned some money, you've kind of actually went through the process of everything. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. Then is the time to actually start paying for some courses and which are going to be getting back like a lot of your time. Just because I think for those beginners, beginner steps, like nobody's going to be able to, to help you out with that. Like you're just going to need to grind it out and learn it on your own skin. And then you can start getting some courses and maybe some of the more out of the box courses, because like, for example, for us at the agency, we have a subscription for front end masters where you can learn JS, you can learn TypeScript, you can learn many things that are going to allow you to use Webflow plus this to go that many levels up and like maybe on award like there's Joe Berry for interactions and stuff like that but all of those courses are like okay every, we have everything like kinda for beginners on the Webflow University and we actually want to level up and kind of become even a more even a better developer by leveraging courses you're going to be able to speed up your process of becoming a web developer but only after going through this first process so that was a lot I guess like there are a lot of steps you need to go over in order to start working and like sometimes like if you're scrolling through your reels like it's gonna seem like that's the next big thing is coming and that you need to learn it now but it takes time. What I've realized, because I guess may maybe the, the audience in like here is like pretty young, is like even like when I was younger than now, I was wanting everything to be done tomorrow. But I, as I get more and more business experience, like even in the freelancing or like or like on my on my side in the agency business, you need to set longer timelines for everything. If you set a longer timeline, you're gonna be able to learn things better, to be better with it, and to be more proud of what you achieved. So just don't try to make anything happen quickly and realize like, okay, if I'm learning this, I'm learning this for my, for life and like this knowledge, nobody can take from me. So I'm not spending the, like any amount of time learning something that is not going to be useful for me until the rest of my life, I guess. So that's basically it. If you want to go ahead and see, maybe like if you're just getting into the freelancing careers and stuff like that, you can see our kind of how to price project, maybe somewhere here, maybe somewhere here. I'm not sure uh, kind of where we're going to be sh uh, showcasing that, but you can see our video on kind of how to actually price projects and kind of how to understand and pricings or view our channel to view many of the other videos on kind of how to actually set up your Webflow agency and how to do many of the things around Webflow.